Hello everyone. I'm here to answer some of the questions that you all have been sending me over the last month or so. Um, you guys have been following me so you know that I've been on the museum Instagram community for a year now and it's really blown me away the support and the engagement that people have here. Um, I can't even begin to explain the experiences I've had from teaching a museology course to just doing this Emerging Canadian series has been really cool and I really thank you all and that's why I wanted to do this and I'm really glad there was some questions sent to me. I'm really glad you have interest in museums so yeah this is great. Um, I have the questions here on my laptop right next to me so I'm just gonna get started. You use your videos as a way for studying for your modules. I'm going to assume this question is referring to my introduction to museology videos so my answer to this would be I actually graduated November 2019 and I did those courses September 2020 so there was a bit of time in between where I wasn't studying and where I was sort of exploring the museum job sphere so that was kind of good I brought that to my teaching. Um, another thing I did throughout that course was before I actually started teaching, I looked at a lot of scholarly material on things like JSTOR. So I was learning things myself before I was teaching it to other people. So that sort of broadened my range. So things like that really helped me. Another thing I noticed when I was doing that course was it helped me when I was job hunting because I was able to explain my area of study to people who weren't actually in museum studies. So I don't know if people in museum studies get this, but sometimes I get people questioning why I study museums and they find it oddly specific. So that kind of experience sort of allowed me to explore what I personally love about museums and to be able to explain it to other people who maybe don't have the personal connection that I do or something like that. It was just, it was really great in that way and it sort of just allowed me to understand what I love about museums. What do you hate about working in museums? Um, I really like this question, but the first thing that came to mind was, this is gonna sound weird, so bear with me. The first thing that came to mind was, I hate that museums are largely run by volunteers. Um, don't get me wrong, I love that volunteering gives people experience and sort of gets people's foot in the door. Sometimes when you're volunteering, you'll end up getting a permanent job in a museum, that kind of thing. But something I've noticed about museums is that they are largely run by volunteers and often volunteers do not get paid for that work that they do in museums, which is not great because sometimes volunteers have to find full-time jobs to supplement their experience in museums. Like you can't, you can't make a living volunteering in museums, but I've seen people who like after retiring or something like that, they they sort of approach volunteering in museums as like a full-time job. Um, as I've said, I really appreciate the passion, but I think there are a lot of people who put a lot of time in museums and don't get the credit they deserve. Something I think about a bit is museums who hire um, volunteers to work in customer service, so to sort of do cash and things like that. Um, I think that's kind of difficult because you can find paying cash jobs um, in a grocery store or something like that. So I kind of feel bad for people who have to, you know, do that kind of work and deal with customers for free, that kind of thing. Um, that's just my experience. I don't know, maybe you think something different, let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on the question. <laughs> What is your audience engagement strategy? Um, I don't really know that I have one, but something I try to do and something that I kind of built my Instagram on is looking at what other people do and sort of going with the flow. Um, I do have themes I try to stay with in my account. For example, you've noticed I try and keep it the Canadian content because I've noticed there's not a lot of Canadian museum posters on the heritage community so I try to post about that and I try to I try to post about museums as much as I can but obviously with this pandemic it's hard to do and something I do try to do in my Instagram is I try not to post much about me or like my personal life or selfies um I do that sometimes probably more than I should but 
I, I'm aware, more aware when I post selfies because that kind of thing is not what the heritage community is about. So yeah, that's what I try to do. I try to avoid certain things and I try to keep a certain theme. But yeah, I definitely don't think I have an engagement strategy and I'm not put down if I don't get a lot of engagement. So yeah, like I don't put tags in my posts or things like that. What made you want to go into the museum field? So I've made posts about this before, but something that made me want to go into the museum field was through my English studies. For those of you who don't know, I have a master's in English literature and through that experience, I was specializing in Canadian literature. And in one of those books, I encountered a character that was sort of experiencing his grandmother through feeling and through touch and he had never met her before but he was encountering her homeland through um, looking at objects that she had from her past so I found that was really interesting and that's what sort of got me thinking about museum studies. I really love the idea that a whole nation could be tied with one object and what happens if you lose that object? Do you lose a nation? Those kind of questions sort of came to my mind and yeah it sort of yeah, it brought me closer to the museum sector. Um, I hadn't really thought about museums as a way of getting into work before, but I did after I read that book and after I explored the heritage sector more. How did working in museums change your perception of art? Um, I would say it changed the way I encounter exhibits because whenever I go to museums now, I sort of think about what goes on behind the scenes. Before I did museum studies, I hadn't really been behind the scenes in a museum. So now whenever I look at an exhibition, I think about how they would have gone about presenting it, preparing for it, how long it would have taken, what I would have been done differently. I'm sort of, I don't know, I became like from an art admirer to an art snob, something like that. Um, something else I started doing after I started studying museum studies is I looked at mundane objects differently, like something like seeing like a painting in the street or like even utensils. I started thinking about them, about how they would have evolved over the years and how it came to be. Um, even pieces of driftwood on the beach, I started thinking of them as art, whereas I wouldn't have before. I mean, I thought they were beautiful before, but I didn't think of them so much as art. So I sort of see cultural heritage in the world more, that kind of thing. It's just sort of made me more aware, and I have a wider eye for things now, I guess. How can I get involved in museum work now? Is it weird to send museums an email and ask if they have the opportunity for shadowing and experience? I think definitely not. It's not weird to send museums an email and express your passion and interest. I think that's what museums thrive on. They want to know that you're interested in their material and they want to know that you're willing to help. So I think, yeah, you should never regret sending museums an email. I think that's a great idea. And I think volunteering is the best way to get your foot in the door for museums. That's the way I did. And that's still what I continue to do. I kind of have a full-time job now, but I'm still doing this um, Canadian series, which is taking my t time, but I'm doing it to show my passion and it's sort of getting my name out there. So yeah, I would suggest any type of thing like that, showing your creativity, just showing your interest. Never regret showing your interest. Favorite museum? Um, whenever I'm asked this question, the thing that comes to mind always is the Galway City Museum. It's not because it's a large museum or anything, but I really enjoyed it because Galway is kind of a small city, county, but I really liked it because it sort of made you feel like you were part of something bigger. If you don't know, Galway has like a history going back to medieval times and Many of the citizens of Galway were involved with the World War I and World War II. So just, I love when you can read about a history you don't know, but feel like you can connect it to universal themes. That's what really stood out to me about the 
going museum. It was just really interesting to read about the huge history from a small community. And I think that's why I like um, community museums, small community museums more than bigger museums because it's more personal. I love personal museums rather than, you know, interactive things or huge science things. I just really love when you're being told the story and you're asked to resonate with these people that you're being introduced to. So yeah, that's just really great. Favorite curating experience? My answer to that question would probably be one of the very first exhibitions I curated, which was at the University of Aberdeen. It was a course called Curating an Exhibition. And during our explorations of the museum store, we encountered a Maori flute, which really amazed everybody. Um, but the thing that I liked about trying to present that object, because the Maori flute has certain protocols about display because the Maori flute can um, express certain elements of the Tonga, which is um, a spirit of the Maori people. I'm not going to try to explain it more than that because um, it's not really my place to explain it, but um, the thing with that object was that we were trying to highlight a history that is very difficult to display. So the way we went around it and something that I kind of had a hand in exploring was um, we used an empty stand to sort of talk about our decision to not display that object. And I think that's something really interesting that you can do in museums. You can sort of play with the emotions of people and you can explore what you can and can't display. So you can use text to talk about a certain issue if you can't really um, display the certain object and I thought that was really interesting and to this day I'm very proud that we were able to explore that. And the last question I have is do you miss being a student? Um, this is a really interesting question and I think I miss the security of being a student. I miss knowing where I was going to be every day. I miss knowing what was happening next year in terms of a schedule. I miss that kind of thing. Being a student is very secure and you sort of, you're on this path where you know where the end is and you know where you stand in that. But I'm also glad I'm not a student anymore because I'm really glad I was able to explore and I'm still exploring the job sector because I think that's a really hard life lesson you have to learn, which is that the job sector is not easy and it's a lot based on luck. So I'm glad I'm not spending more time being a student and not exploring. I to end this video by saying that everything I've said today is my personal experience and my personal opinion. Um, the great thing about the museum sector is that everybody has their own experience and everybody has their own path. That's kind of what I've been trying to do with this Emerging Canadian series too. I really think people need the opportunity to express themselves in the way they see fit and to explore their interest museums they can be very specific so you can explore your own specific interest in museums or like you can explore it through national museums where you can explore a broad range of things so yeah that's really what I like about museums and I really appreciate everybody giving me the opportunity to sort of express my personal opinion